European Union, Wikipedia Audio The European Union is a political and economic union of 28 member states that are located primarily in Europe. It has an area of 4,475,757 km2, and an estimated population of over 510 million. The EU has developed an internal single market through a standardized system of laws that apply in all member states. EU policies aim to ensure the free movement of people, goods, services, and capital within the internal market, enact legislation in justice and home affairs, and maintain common policies on trade, agriculture, fisheries, and regional development. Within the Schengen area, passport controls have been abolished. A monetary union was established in 1999 and came into full force in 2002, and is composed of 19 EU member states which use the euro currency. The EU traces its origins from the European coal and steel community and the European Economic Community, established, respectively by the 1951 Treaty of Paris and 1957 Treaty of Rome. The original members of what came to be known as the European Communities, were the Inner Six, Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and West Germany. The Communities and its successors have grown in size by the accession of new member states and in power by the addition of policy areas to its remit. While no member state has left the EU or its antecedent organizations, the United Kingdom enacted the result of a membership referendum in June 2016 and is currently negotiating its withdrawal. The Maastricht Treaty established the European Union in 1993 and introduced European citizenship. The latest major amendment to the constitutional basis of the EU, the Treaty of Lisbon, came into force in 2009. The European Union provides more foreign aid than any other economic union. Covering 7.3% of the world population, the EU in 2016 generated a nominal gross domestic product of 16.477 trillion US dollars constituting approximately 22.2% of global nominal GDP and 16.9% when measured in terms of purchasing power parity. Additionally, 27 out of 28 EU countries have a very high Human Development Index, according to the United Nations Development Programme. In 2012, the EU was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Through the common foreign and security policy, the EU has developed a role in external relations and defence. The Union maintains permanent diplomatic missions throughout the world and represents itself at the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the G7, and the G20. Because of its global influence, the European Union has been described as an emerging superpower. History Victor Hugo, International Peace Congress, 1849 During the centuries following the fall of Rome in 476, several European states viewed themselves as translatio imperii of the defunct Latin Empire, the Frankish Empire and the Holy Roman Empire were attempts to resurrect Rome in the West. The Russian Tsardom, and ultimately the Empire, declared Moscow to be Third Rome and inheritor of the Eastern tradition after the fall of Constantinople in 1453. The gap between Greek East and Latin West had already been widened by the political scission of the Roman Empire in the 4th century and the Great Schism of 1054, and would be eventually widened again by the Iron Curtain. The medieval Christendom and political power of the papacy are also often cited as premises to European integration and unity. The European Council, 
which sets the general political directions and priorities of the Union by gathering together its member states' heads of state-slash-government. The conclusions of its summits are adopted by consensus, the European Commission, the guardian of the treaties consists of an executive cabinet of public officials, led by an indirectly elected president. This College of Commissioners manages and directs the Commission's permanent civil service. It turns the consensus objectives of the European Council into legislative proposals. The Council of the European Union is an executive meeting of ministers of member states' governments' departments, which meets to amend, approve, or reject proposed legislation from the Commission. It forms the upper house of the EU's essentially bicameral legislature. Its approval is required for any proposal to enter into law. The European Parliament consists of 751 directly elected representatives, forming the EU's lower house of its bicameral legislature. It shares with the Council of the EU equal legislative powers to amend, approve, or reject Commission proposals for most areas of EU legislation. Its powers are limited in areas where member states view sovereignty to be of primary concern. It elects the Commission's president, must approve the College of Commissioners, and may vote to remove them collectively from office. The Court of Justice of the European Union ensures the uniform application of EU law and resolves disputes between EU institutions and member states, and against EU institutions on behalf of individuals. The European Central Bank is responsible for monetary stability within member states. The European Court of Auditors investigates the proper management of Finances within both the EU entities and EU funding provided to its member states. As well as providing oversight and advice, it can refer unresolved issues to the European Court of Justice to arbitrate on any alleged irregularities. Pan-European political thought truly emerged during the 19th century inspired by the liberal ideas of the French and American revolutions and the demise of Napoleon's empire. In the decades following the outcomes of the Congress of Vienna, ideals of European unity flourished across the continent, especially in the writings of Wojciech Jastrzebowski, Giuseppe Mazzini, or Theodore de Corwin Szymanowski. The term United States of Europe was famously used at that time by Victor Hugo during a speech at the International Peace Congress held in Paris in 1849. In 1920, advocating the creation of a European Economic Union, British economist John Maynard Keynes wrote that a free trade union should be established to impose no protectionist tariffs whatever against the produce of other members of the Union. One of the first to imagine of a modern political union of the continent was Richard von Kudenhof Kalergi, who wrote the Pan-Europa Manifesto in 1923 and founded the Pan-Europa Movement. His ideas influenced his contemporaries, among which then Prime Minister of France Aristide Briand. In September 8, 1929, the later gave a famous speech in favor of a European Union before the Assembly of the League of Nations, ancestor of the United Nations. After World War II, European integration was seen as an antidote to the extreme nationalism which had devastated the continent. In a speech delivered on September 19, 1946 at the University of Zurich, Switzerland, Winston Churchill postulated the emerging of a United States of Europe during the 20th century. The 1948 Hague Congress was a pivotal moment in European federal history, as it led to the creation of the European Movement International and of the College of Europe where Europe's future leaders would live and study together. 1952 saw the creation of the European Coal and Steel Community, which was declared to be a first step in the Federation of Europe. 
The supporters of the community included Alcide de Gaspari, Jean Monnet, Robert Schumann, and Paul Henri Spock. These men and others are officially credited as the founding fathers of the European Union. In 1957, Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands and West Germany signed the Treaty of Rome, which created the European Economic Community and established a customs union. They also signed another pact creating the European Atomic Energy Community for cooperation in developing nuclear energy. Both treaties came into force in 1958. The EEC and Euratom were created separately from the ECSC, although they shared the same courts and the Common Assembly. The EEC was headed by Walter Halstein and Euratom was headed by Louis Armand and then Etienne Hirsch. Euratom was to integrate sectors in nuclear energy while the EEC would develop a customs union among members. The president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, indirectly elected by EU citizens via the European Parliament for a five-year renewable term following European parliamentary elections, together with, the President of the European Council, Donald Tusk, who chairs the gatherings of the EU's 28 national heads of government-slash-state and is elected by them for a 2.5-year once renewable term, Eurogroup President, Mario Centino who chairs informal meetings of finance ministers from EU member states that use the euro as their currency, and is elected from amongst them, by them, for a 2.5-year renewable term, the European Central Bank President, Mario Draghi, elected de facto by the European Council members who represent Eurozone states, for an 8-year non-renewable term the European Parliament President, Antonio Tajani, elected from amongst the 751 directly elected members of the European Parliament, by them, for a 2.5-year renewable term. During the 1960s, tensions began to show, with France seeking to limit supranational power. Nevertheless, in 1965 an agreement was reached and on July 1, 1967 the merger treaty created a single set of institutions for the three communities, which were collectively referred to as the European Communities. Jean Ray presided over the first merged commission. In 1973, the communities were enlarged to include Denmark, Ireland and the United Kingdom. Norway had negotiated to join at the same time, but Norwegian voters rejected membership in a referendum. In 1979, the first direct elections to the European Parliament were held. This was marked by a special international friendly football match at Wembley Stadium between two teams called the Three and the Six which finished 2-0 to the Three. Europa Official Web Portal institutions, European Council, European Commission, Council, European Parliament, European Central Bank, Court of Justice of the European Union, Court of Auditors, Agencies, Eurolex EU Laws, Historical Archives of the European Union. Background Greece joined in 1981 Portugal and Spain following in 1986. In 1985, the Schengen Agreement paved the way for the creation of open borders without passport controls between most member states and some non-member states. In 1986, the European flag began to be used by the EEC and the single European Act was signed. In 1990, after the fall of the Eastern Bloc, the former East Germany became part of the communities as part of a reunified Germany. A close fiscal integration with the introduction of the Euro was not matched by institutional oversight making things more troubling. 
Attempts to solve the problems and to make the EU more efficient and coherent had limited success. With further enlargement planned to include the former communist states of Central and Eastern Europe, as well as Cyprus and Malta, the Copenhagen criteria for candidate members to join the EU were agreed upon in June 1993. The expansion of the EU introduced a new level of complexity and discord. The European Union was formally established when the Maastricht Treaty whose main architects were Helmut Kohl and François Mitterrand came into force on November 1, 1993. The treaty also gave the name European Community to the EEC, even if it was referred as such before the treaty. In 1995, Austria, Finland, and Sweden joined the EU. In 2002, euro banknotes and coins replaced national currencies in 12 of the member states. Since then, the eurozone has increased to encompass 19 countries. The euro currency became the second largest reserve currency in the world. In 2004, the EU saw its biggest enlargement to date when Cyprus, the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Malta, Poland, Slovakia, and Slovenia joined the Union. In 2007, Bulgaria and Romania became EU members. The same year, Slovenia adopted the euro, followed in 2008 by Cyprus and Malta, by Slovakia in 2009, by Estonia in 2011, by Latvia in 2014 and by Lithuania in 2015. On December 1, 2009, the Lisbon Treaty entered into force and reformed many aspects of the EU. In particular, it changed the legal structure of the European Union, merging the EU three pillars system into a single legal entity provisioned with a legal personality, created a permanent president of the European Council, the first of which was Herman van Rompuy, and strengthened the position of the High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. In 2012, the EU received the Nobel Peace Prize for having contributed to the advancement of peace and reconciliation, democracy, and human rights in Europe. In 2013, Croatia became the 28th EU member. Preliminary Treaty of Rome From the beginning of the 2010s, the cohesion of the European Union has been tested by several issues, including a debt crisis in some of the Eurozone countries, increasing migration from the Middle East and the United Kingdom's withdrawal from the EU. A referendum in the UK on its membership of the European Union was held on June 23, 2016, with 51.9% of participants voting to leave. This is referred to in common parlance throughout Europe as Brexit, a portmanteau of Britain and Exit. The UK formally notified the European Council of its decision to leave on March 29, 2017 initiating the formal withdrawal procedure for leaving the EU, committing the UK to leave the EU on March 29, 2019. Eurostat European Union Statistics Explained, Datasets Related to the EU on CKAN, CIA World Factbook, European Union The World Factbook Central Intelligence Agency, British Path Online News Real Archive of the 20th Century, Search EU Financial Sanctions List, The European Union, Questions and Answers Congressional Research Service, Works by European Union at Project Gutenberg, Works by or about European Union at Internet Archive Maastricht Treaty Lisbon Treaty Structural Evolution Geography Environment
The following timeline illustrates the integration that has led to the formation of the present Union, in terms of structural development driven by international treaties. Der Spiegel interview with Helmut Schmidt and Valerie Giscard d'Estaing, documents and clippings about European Union in the 20th century press archives of the German National Library of Economics. The EU's member states cover an area of 4,423,147 square kilometers. The EU's highest peak is Mont Blanc in the Grayan Alps, 4,810.45 meters above sea level. The lowest points in the EU are Lammefjorden, Denmark and Zeewide Plas Boulder, Netherlands, at 7 m below sea level. European Studies Hub Interactive Learning Tools and Resources to Help Students and Researchers Better Understand and Engage with the European Union and Its Politics The landscape, climate, and economy of the EU are influenced by its coastline, which is 65,993 km long. Demographics including the overseas territories of France which are located outside the continent of Europe, but which are members of the Union, the EU experiences most types of climate from Arctic to tropical, rendering meteorological averages for the EU as a whole meaningless. The majority of the population lives in areas with a temperate maritime climate, a Mediterranean climate, or a warm summer continental or hemiboreal climate. The EU's population is highly urbanized, with some 75% of inhabitants living in urban areas as of 2006. Cities are largely spread out across the EU, although with a large grouping in and around the Benelux. In 1957, when the EEC was founded, it had no environmental policy. Over the past 50 years, an increasingly dense network of legislation has been created, extending to all areas of environmental protection, including air pollution, water quality, waste management, nature conservation, and the control of chemicals, industrial hazards and biotechnology. According to the Institute for European Environmental Policy, environmental law comprises over 500 directives, regulations, and decisions, making environmental policy a core area of European politics. European policymakers originally increased the EU's capacity to act on environmental issues by defining it as a trade problem. Trade barriers and competitive distortions in the common market could emerge due to the different environmental standards in each member state. In subsequent years, the environment became a formal policy area, with its own policy actors, principles, and procedures. The legal basis for EU environmental policy was established with the introduction of the Single European Act in 1987. Initially, EU environmental policy focused on Europe. More recently, the EU has demonstrated leadership in global environmental governance, e.g. the role of the EU in securing the ratification and coming into force of the Kyoto Protocol despite opposition from the United States. This international dimension is reflected in the EU's sixth environmental action program which recognizes that its objectives can only be achieved if key international agreements are actively supported and properly implemented both at EU level and worldwide. The Lisbon Treaty further strengthened the leadership ambitions. EU law has played a significant role in improving habitat and species protection in Europe, as well as contributing to improvements in air and water quality and waste management. Mitigating climate change is one of the top priorities of EU environmental policy. In 2007, member states agreed that, in future, 20% of the energy used across the EU must be renewable, 
and carbon dioxide emissions have to be lower in 2020 by at least 20% compared to 1990 levels. The EU has adopted an emissions trading system to incorporate carbon emissions into the economy. The European Green Capital is an annual award given to cities that focuses on the environment, energy efficiency, and quality of life in urban areas to create smart city. As of January 1, 2016, the population of the European Union is about 510.1 million people. In 2015, 5.1 million children were born in the EU 28, corresponding to a birth rate of 10 per 1,000, which is 8 births below the world average. For comparison, the EU 28 birth rate had stood at 10.6 in 2000, 12.8 in 1985 and 16.3 in 1970. Its population growth rate was positive at an estimated 0.23% in 2016. Population In 2010, 47.3 million people who lived in the EU were born outside their resident country. This corresponds to 9.4% of the total EU population. Of these, 31.4 million were born outside the EU and 16.0 million were born in another EU member state. The largest absolute numbers of people born outside the EU were in Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Spain, Italy, and the Netherlands. The EU contains about 40 urban areas with populations of over 1 million including the three megacities of London, Paris, and the rhine ruhr In addition to large agglomerations, the EU also includes several densely populated polycentric urbanist regions that have no single core but have emerged from the connection of several cities and now encompass a large metropolis. The largest of these polycentric metropolis include rhine ruhr with approximately 11.5 million inhabitants, Randstad with approximate 7 million, Frankfurt Rhine Main with approximate 5.8 million, the Flemish Diamond with approximate 5.5 million, and Resund with approximate 3.7 million. Urbanization Paris Milan Languages Religion Education and Science Survey 2012, Native, Native Language, Total, EU Citizens Able to Hold a, Conversation in this Language The European Union has 24 official languages, Bulgarian, Croatian, Czech, Danish, Dutch, English, Estonian, Finnish, French, German, Greek, Hungarian, Italian, Irish, Latvian, Lithuanian, Maltese, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, Slovak, Slovene, Spanish, and Swedish. Important documents, such as legislation, are translated into every official language and the European Parliament provides translation for documents and plenary sessions. Due to the high number of official idioms, most of the institutions use only a handful of working languages. The European Commission conducts its internal business in three procedural languages, English, French and German. The European Court of Justice uses French as the working language, while the European Central Bank conducts its business primarily in English. Even though language policy is the responsibility of member states, EU institutions promote multilingualism among its citizens. English is the most widely spoken language in the EU being understood by 51% of the EU population when counting both native and non-native speakers. 
German is the most widely spoken mother tongue more than a half of EU citizens is able to engage in a conversation in a language other than their mother tongue. Most official languages of the EU belong to the Indo-European language family, represented by the Balto-Slavic, the Italic, the Germanic, the Hellenic, and the Celtic branches. Some European populations though, namely the Hungarians, the Finns, the Estonians, the Basques, and the Maltese do not share an Indo-European language. The three official alphabets of the European Union, all derive from the archaic Greek scripts. Besides the 24 official languages, there are about 150 regional and minority languages, spoken by up to 50 million people. Catalan, Galician, Basque, Scottish Gaelic and Welsh are not recognized official languages of the European Union but have semi-official status, official translations of the treaties are made into them and citizens have the right to correspond with the institutions in these languages. The European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages ratified by most EU states provides general guidelines that states can follow to protect their linguistic heritage. The European Day of Languages is held annually on September 26 and is aimed at encouraging language learning across Europe. The EU has no formal connection to any religion. The Article 17 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union recognizes the status under national law of churches and religious associations as well as that of philosophical and non-confessional organizations. The preamble to the Treaty on European Union mentions the cultural, religious and humanist inheritance of Europe. Discussion over the draft texts of the European Constitution and later the Treaty of Lisbon included proposals to mention Christianity or God, or both, in the preamble of the text, but the idea faced opposition and was dropped. Christians in the European Union are divided among members of Catholicism, numerous Protestant denominations, and the Eastern Orthodox Church. In 2009, the EU had an estimated Muslim population of 13 million, and an estimated Jewish population of over a million. The other world religions of Buddhism, Hinduism, and Sikhism are also represented in the EU population. According to new polls about religiosity in the European Union in 2015 by Eurobarometer, Christianity is the largest religion in the European Union, accounting for 71.6% of the EU population. Catholics are the largest Christian group, accounting for 45.3% of the EU population, while Protestants make up 11.1%, Eastern Orthodox make up 9.6% and other Christians make up 5.6%. Eurostat's Eurobarometer opinion polls showed in 2005 that 52% of EU citizens believed in a god, 27% in some sort of spirit or life force, and 18% had no form of belief. Many countries have experienced falling church attendance and membership in recent years. The countries where the fewest people reported a religious belief were Estonia and the Czech Republic. The most religious countries were Malta as well as Cyprus and Romania each with about 90% of citizens professing a belief in God. Across the EU, belief was higher among women, older people, those with religious upbringing those who left school at 15 or 16 and those positioning themselves on the right of the political scale. Basic education is an area where the EU's role is limited to supporting national governments. In higher education, the policy was developed in the 1980s in programs supporting exchanges and mobility. The most visible of these has been the Erasmus program a university exchange program which began in 1987. 
In its first 20 years, it has supported international exchange opportunities for well over 1.5 million university and college students and has become a symbol of European student life. There are now similar programs for school pupils and teachers, for trainees in vocational education and training, and for adult learners in the Lifelong Learning Program 2007-2013. These programs are designed to encourage a wider knowledge of other countries and to spread good practices in the education and training fields across the EU. Through its support of the Bologna process, the EU is supporting comparable standards and compatible degrees across Europe. Scientific development is facilitated through the EU's framework programs, the first of which started in 1984. The aims of EU policy in this area are to coordinate and stimulate research. The Independent European Research Council allocates EU funds to European or national research projects. EU research and technological framework programs deal in a number of areas, for example energy where the aim is to develop a diverse mix of renewable energy to help the environment and to reduce dependence on imported fuels. Although the EU has no major competences in the field of health care, Article 35 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union affirms that a high level of human health protection shall be ensured in the definition and implementation of all Union policies and activities. The European Commission's Directorate General for Health and Consumers seeks to align national laws on the protection of people's health on the consumer's rights, on the safety of food and other products. All EU and many other European countries offer their citizens a free European health insurance card which, on a reciprocal basis, provides insurance for emergency medical treatment insurance when visiting other participating European countries. A directive on cross-border healthcare aims at promoting cooperation on healthcare between member states and facilitating access to safe and high-quality cross-border healthcare for European patients. The European Union operates according to the principles of conferral and of subsidiarity. Laws made by the EU institutions are passed in a variety of forms. Generally speaking, they can be classified into two groups, those which come into force without the necessity for national implementation measures and those which specifically require national implementation measures. Through successive enlargements, the European Union has grown from the six founding states to the current 28. Countries accede to the Union by becoming party to the founding treaties thereby subjecting themselves to the privileges and obligations of EU membership. This entails a partial delegation of sovereignty to the institutions in return for representation within those institutions, a practice often referred to as pooling of sovereignty. To become a member, a country must meet the Copenhagen criteria defined at the 1993 meeting of the European Council in Copenhagen. These require a stable democracy that respects human rights and the rule of law, a functioning market economy, and the acceptance of the obligations of membership, including EU law. Evaluation of a country's fulfillment of the criteria is the responsibility of the European Council. No member state has yet left the Union, although Greenland withdrew in 1985. The Lisbon Treaty now contains a clause under Article 50, providing for a member to leave the EU. There are six countries that are recognized as candidates for membership, Albania, Iceland, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, and Turkey though Iceland suspended negotiations in 2013. Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kosovo are officially recognized as potential candidates, with Bosnia and Herzegovina having submitted a membership application. 
The four countries forming the European Free Trade Association are not EU members, but have partly committed to the EU's economy and regulations, Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway, which are a part of the single market through the European Economic Area, and Switzerland, which has similar ties through bilateral treaties. The relationships of the European microstates, Andorra, Monaco, San Marino and the Vatican include the use of the euro and other areas of cooperation. The following 28 sovereign states constitute the European Union. The EU operates through a hybrid system of supranational and intergovernmental decision-making. EU policy is in general promulgated by EU directives, which are then implemented in the domestic legislation of its member states, and EU regulations, which are immediately enforceable in all member states. The EU's seven principal decision-making bodies known as the institutions of the European Union are Beyond the EU institutions is the Council of Europe which is a wider international organization with 47 member states whose stated aim is to uphold human rights, democracy and the rule of law in Europe. Its legislative principles are promulgated by the European Convention on Human Rights and its judicial agent is the European Court of Human Rights. These ethical institutions are distinct from the legislative European Union institutions mentioned above, although ECHR decisions are enforceable upon the EU institutions and upon the several judiciaries of sovereign member states of the EU. The Venice Commission formerly the European Commission for Democracy through Law provides advice regarding constitutional matters in order to improve functioning of democratic institutions and the protection of human rights in member states of the Council of Europe. Apart from the national political structures within member states and the directly elected European Parliament the EU also encourages citizen participation via development projects such as Cordis and the Erasmus. Lobbying at EU level by special interest groups is regulated to try to balance the aspirations of private initiatives with public interest decision-making process. The five presidents were led by by working together, they seek provide a forward policy consideration nucleus for the various European think tanks which discuss various possible future social and economic scenarios that will eventually require ratification by the EU electorate. The classification of the EU in terms of international or constitutional law has been much debated. It began life as an international organization and gradually developed into a confederation of states. However, since the mid-1960s it has also added several of the key attributes of a federation, such as the direct effect of the law of the general level of government upon the individual and majority voting in the decision-making process of the general level of government, without becoming a federation per se. Scholars thus today see it as an intermediate form lying between a confederation and a federation, being an instance of neither political structure. For this reason, the organization is termed sui generis, although some argue that this designation is no longer valid. The organization has traditionally used the terms community and later union to describe itself. The difficulties of classification involve the difference between national law and international law. They can also be seen in the light of differing European and American constitutional traditions. Especially in terms of the European tradition, the term federation is equated with a sovereign federal state in international law, so the EU cannot be called a federation at least, not without qualification. It is, however, described as being based on a federal model or federal in nature, and so it may be appropriate to consider it a federal union of states, a conceptual structure lying between the confederation of states and the federal state. The German Constitutional Court refers to the EU as a Statenverbund, 
an intermediate structure between the Staudenbund and the Bundesstaat, consistent with this concept. This may be a long-lived political form. Professor Andrew Moravczyk claims that the EU is unlikely to develop further into a federal state, but instead has reached maturity as a constitutional system. The European Union has seven institutions, the European Parliament, the European Council, the Council of the European Union, the European Commission, the Court of Justice of the European Union, the European Central Bank and the European Court of Auditors. Competence in scrutinizing and amending legislation is shared between the Council of the European Union and the European Parliament, while executive tasks are performed by the European Commission and in a limited capacity by the European Council. The monetary policy of the Eurozone is determined by the European Central Bank. The interpretation and the application of EU law and the treaties are ensured by the Court of Justice of the European Union. The EU budget is scrutinized by the European Court of Auditors. There are also a number of ancillary bodies which advise the EU or operate in a specific area. Provides impetus and direction. Legislature Legislature Executive Judiciary Central Bank Health Care Financial Auditor The European Parliament forms the other half of the EU's legislature. The 751 members of the European Parliament are directly elected by EU citizens every five years on the basis of proportional representation. Although MEPs are elected on a national basis, they sit according to political groups rather than their nationality. Each country has a set number of seats and is divided into sub-national constituencies where this does not affect the proportional nature of the voting system. The European Union Council, the Council of Ministers, and the Commission fulfilled the duties as the executive for the Parliament. The European Parliament and the Council of the European Union pass legislation jointly in nearly all areas under the ordinary legislative procedure. This also applies to the EU budget. The European Commission is accountable to Parliament, requiring its approval to take office, having to report back to it and subject to motions of censure from it. The President of the European Parliament carries out the role of Speaker in Parliament and represents it externally. The President and Vice Presidents are elected by MEPs every two and a half years. The European Council gives political direction to the EU. It convenes at least four times a year and comprises the President of the European Council the President of the European Commission and one representative per member state. The High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy also takes part in its meetings. It has been described by some as the Union's supreme political authority. It is actively involved in the negotiation of treaty changes and defines the EU's policy agenda and strategies. The European Council uses its leadership role to sort out disputes between member states and the institutions, and to resolve political crises and disagreements over controversial issues and policies. It acts externally as a collective head of state and ratifies important documents. Politics Tasks for the President of the European Council are ensuring the external representation of the EU, driving consensus and resolving divergences among member states, both during meetings of the European Council and over the periods between them. The European Council should not be mistaken for the Council of Europe, an international organization independent of the EU based in Strasbourg. Member States The Council of the European Union and the Council of Ministers, 
its former title forms one half of the EU's legislature. It consists of a government minister from each member state and meets in different compositions depending on the policy area being addressed. Notwithstanding its different configurations, it is considered to be one single body. In addition to its legislative functions, the Council also exercises executive functions in relations to the common foreign and security policy. The European Commission acts as the EU's executive arm and is responsible for initiating legislation and the day-to-day -day running of the EU. The Commission is also seen as the motor of European integration. It operates as a cabinet government, with 28 commissioners for different areas of policy, one from each member state, though commissioners are bound to represent the interests of the EU as a whole rather than their home state. Institutions Relation to the Council of Europe One of the 28 is the President of the European Commission appointed by the European Council. After the President, the most prominent commissioner is the High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, who is ex officio a Vice President of the Commission and is also chosen by the European Council. The other 26 commissioners are subsequently appointed by the Council of the European Union in agreement with the nominated President. The 28 commissioners as a single body are subject to a vote of approval by the European Parliament. The 2011 EU Budget The EU had an agreed budget of €120.7 billion Euros for the year 2007 and €864.3 billion Euros for the period 2007-2013 representing 1.10% and 1.05% of the EU27 SGNI forecast for the respective periods. In 1960, the budget of the then European Economic Community was 0.03% of GDP. Relations between the EU and its electorate Constitutional nature Governance European Parliament European Council Council of the European Union European Commission Budget Competences Legal System Courts of Justice Fundamental Rights Acts Area of Freedom, Security and Justice Foreign Relations Military In the 2010 budget of €141.5 billion, Euros, the largest single expenditure item is cohesion and competitiveness with around 45% of the total budget. Next comes agriculture with approximately 31% of the total. Rural development, environment, and fisheries takes up around 11%. Administration accounts for around 6%. The EU as a global partner and citizenship, freedom, security, and justice bring up the rear with approximately 6% and 1% respectively. The Court of Auditors is legally obliged to provide the Parliament and the Council with a statement of assurance as to the reliability of the accounts and the legality and regularity of the underlying transactions. The Court also gives opinions and proposals on financial legislation and anti-fraud actions. The Parliament uses this to decide whether to approve the Commission's handling of the budget. The European Court of Auditors has signed off the European Union accounts every year since 2007 and, while making it clear that the European Commission has more work to do, has highlighted that most of the errors take place at national level. In their report on 2009 the auditors found that five areas of union expenditure, agriculture and the cohesion fund, were materially affected by error. 
The European Commission estimated in 2009 that the financial effect of irregularities was 1,863 million euros. EU member states retain all powers not explicitly handed to the European Union. In some areas the EU enjoys exclusive competence. These are areas in which member states have renounced any capacity to enact legislation. In other areas the EU and its member states share the competence to legislate. While both can legislate, member states can only legislate to the extent to which the EU has not. In other policy areas the EU can only coordinate, support and supplement member state action but cannot enact legislation with the aim of harmonizing national laws. That a particular policy area falls into a certain category of competence is not necessarily indicative of what legislative procedure is used for enacting legislation within that policy area. Different legislative procedures are used within the same category of competence, and even with the same policy area. The distribution of competences in various policy areas between member states and the Union is divided in the following three categories. The EU is based on a series of treaties. These first established the European Community and the EU, and then made amendments to those founding treaties. These are power-giving treaties which set broad policy goals and establish institutions with the necessary legal powers to implement those goals. These legal powers include the ability to enact legislation which can directly affect all member states and their inhabitants. The EU has legal personality, with the right to sign agreements and international treaties. Under the principle of supremacy, National courts are required to enforce the treaties that their member states have ratified, and thus the laws enacted under them, even if doing so requires them to ignore conflicting national law, and even constitutional provisions. Humanitarian Aid The judicial branch of the EU formally called the Court of Justice of the European Union consists of two courts the Court of Justice and the General Court. The Court of Justice primarily deals with cases taken by member states, the institutions, and cases referred to it by the courts of member states. The General Court mainly deals with cases taken by individuals and companies directly before the EU's courts, and the European Union Civil Service Tribunal adjudicates in disputes between the European Union and its civil service. Decisions from the General Court can be appealed to the Court of Justice but only on a point of law. The treaties declare that the EU itself is founded on the values of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law and respect for human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minorities, in a society in which pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity and equality between women and men prevail. Economy In 2009, the Lisbon Treaty gave legal effect to the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. The Charter is a codified catalogue of fundamental rights against which the EU's legal acts can be judged. It consolidates many rights which were previously recognised by the Court of Justice and derived from the constitutional traditions common to the Member States. The Court of Justice has long recognised fundamental rights and has, on occasion, invalidated EU legislation based on its failure to adhere to those fundamental rights. Although signing the European Convention on Human Rights is a condition for EU membership, previously, the EU itself could not accede to the Convention as it is neither a state nor had the competence to accede. The Lisbon Treaty and Protocol 14 to the ECHR have changed this. The former binds the EU to accede to the Convention while the latter formally permits it. Internal Market 
Although, the EU is independent from Council of Europe, they share purpose and ideas especially on rule of law, human rights, and democracy. Further European Convention on Human Rights and European Social Charter, the source of law of Charter of Fundamental Rights are created by Council of Europe. The EU also promoted human rights issues in the wider world. The EU opposes the death penalty and has proposed its worldwide abolition. Abolition of the death penalty is a condition for EU membership. The main legal acts of the EU come in three forms, regulations, directives, and decisions. Regulations become law in all member states the moment they come into force, without the requirement for any implementing measures, and automatically override conflicting domestic provisions. Directives require member states to achieve a certain result while leaving them discretion as to how to achieve the result. The details of how they are to be implemented are left to member states. When the time limit for implementing directives passes, they may, under certain conditions, have direct effect in national law against member states. Monetary Union Decisions offer an alternative to the two above modes of legislation. They are legal acts which only apply to specified individuals, companies, or a particular member state. They are most often used in competition law, or on rulings on state aid, but are also frequently used for procedural or administrative matters within the institutions. Regulations, directives, and decisions are of equal legal value and apply without any formal hierarchy. Since the creation of the EU in 1993, it has developed its competencies in the area of freedom, security, and justice, initially at an intergovernmental level and later by supranationalism. To this end, Agencies have been established that coordinate associated actions, Europol for cooperation of police forces, Eurojust for cooperation between prosecutors, and Frontex for cooperation between border control authorities. The EU also operates the ScanGen information system which provides a common database for police and immigration authorities. This cooperation had to particularly be developed with the advent of open borders through the Schengen Agreement and the associated cross-border crime. Furthermore, the Union has legislated in areas such as extradition, family law, asylum law, and criminal justice. Prohibitions against sexual and nationality discrimination have a long standing in the treaties. In more recent years, these have been supplemented by powers to legislate against discrimination based on race, religion, disability, age, and sexual orientation. By virtue of these powers, the EU has enacted legislation on sexual discrimination in the workplace, age discrimination, and racial discrimination. Foreign policy cooperation between member states dates from the establishment of the community in 1957, when member states negotiated as a bloc in international trade negotiations under the common commercial policy. Steps for a more wide-ranging coordination in foreign relations began in 1970 with the establishment of European political cooperation which created an informal consultation process between member states with the aim of forming common foreign policies. It was not, however, until 1987 when European political cooperation was introduced on a formal basis by the Single European Act. EPC was renamed as the Common Foreign and Security Policy by the Maastricht Treaty. Energy The aims of the CFSP are to promote both the EU's own interests and those of the international community as a whole, including the furtherance of international cooperation, respect for human rights, democracy, and the rule of law. 
The CFSP requires unanimity among the member states on the appropriate policy to follow on any particular issue. The unanimity and difficult issues treated under the CFSP sometimes lead to disagreements, such as those which occurred over the war in Iraq. The coordinator and representative of the CFSP within the EU is the High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy who speaks on behalf of the EU in foreign policy and defence matters, and has the task of articulating the positions expressed by the member states on these fields of policy into a common alignment. The High Representative heads up the European External Action Service a unique EU department that has been officially implemented and operational since December 1, 2010 on the occasion of the first anniversary of the entry into force of the Treaty of Lisbon. The EEAS will serve as a foreign ministry and diplomatic corps for the European Union. Infrastructure Besides the emerging international policy of the European Union, the international influence of the EU is also felt through enlargement. The perceived benefits of becoming a member of the EU act as an incentive for both political and economic reform in states wishing to fulfill the EU's accession criteria, and are considered an important factor contributing to the reform of European formerly communist countries. 762 This influence on the internal affairs of other countries is generally referred to as soft power, as opposed to military hard power. Agriculture The predecessors of the European Union were not devised as a military alliance because NATO was largely seen as appropriate and sufficient for defence purposes. 22 EU members are members of NATO while the remaining member states follow policies of neutrality. The Western European Union, a military alliance with a mutual defence clause, was disbanded in 2010 as its role had been transferred to the EU. Competition According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, the United Kingdom spent $61 billion on defence in 2014, placing it fifth in the world, while France spent $53 billion, the sixth largest. Together, the UK and France account for approximately 40% of European countries' defence budget and 50% of their military capacity. Both are officially recognized nuclear weapon states holding permanent seats on the United Nations Security Council. Culture Sport Symbols Media Following the Kosovo War in 1999, the European Council agreed that the Union must have the capacity for autonomous action backed by credible military forces, the means to decide to use them, and the readiness to do so, in order to respond to international crises without prejudice to actions by NATO. To that end, a number of efforts were made to increase the EU's military capability, notably the Helsinki headline goal process. After much discussion, the most concrete result was the EU Battle Groups Initiative, each of which is planned to be able to deploy quickly about 1,500 personnel. EU forces have been deployed on peacekeeping missions from Middle and Northern Africa to the Western Balkans and Western Asia. EU military operations are supported by a number of bodies, including the European Defence Agency, European Union Satellite Centre and the European Union Military Staff. Frontex is an agency of the EU established to manage the cooperation between national border guards securing its external borders. It aims to detect and stop illegal immigration, human trafficking and terrorist infiltration.
In 2015 the European Commission presented its proposal for a new European Border and Coast Guard Agency having a stronger role and mandate along with national authorities for border management. In an EU consisting of 28 members, substantial security and defence cooperation is increasingly relying on collaboration among all member states. Notes Sources the European Commission's Humanitarian Aid and Civil Protection Department, or ECHO, provides humanitarian aid from the EU to developing countries. In 2012, its budget amounted to €874 million, Euros, 51% of the budget went to Africa and 20% to Asia, Latin America, the Caribbean and Pacific and 20% to the Middle East and Mediterranean. Humanitarian aid is financed directly by the budget as part of the financial instruments for external action and also by the European Development Fund. The EU's external action financing is divided into geographic instruments and thematic instruments. The geographic instruments provide aid through the Development Cooperation Instrument, which must spend 95% of its budget on official development assistance, and from the European Neighbourhood and Partnership Instrument, which contains some relevant programmes. The European Development Fund is made up of voluntary contributions by member states, but there is pressure to merge the EDF into the budget-financed instruments to encourage increased contributions to match the 0.7% target and allow the European Parliament greater oversight. In 2016, the average among EU countries was 0.4% and 5 had met or exceeded the 0.7% target, Denmark, Germany, Luxembourg, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. The European Union has established a single market across the territory of all its members representing 511 million citizens. In 2016, the EU had a combined GDP of $20 trillion international dollars, a 17% share of global gross domestic product by purchasing power parity. As a political entity the European Union is represented in the World Trade Organization. EU member states own the estimated second largest after United States net wealth in the world, equal to 25% of the $280 trillion global wealth. 19 member states have joined a monetary union known as the Eurozone, which uses the euro as a single currency. The currency union represents 340 million EU citizens. The euro is the second largest reserve currency as well as the second most traded currency in the world after the United States dollar. Of the top 500 largest corporations in the world measured by revenue in 2010, 161 have their headquarters in the EU. In 2016, unemployment in the EU stood at 8.9% while inflation was at 2.2%, and the current account balance at 0.9% of GDP. The average annual net earnings in the European Union was around €24,000 in 2015, which was about 70% of that in the United States. There is a significant variance for GDP per capita within individual EU states. The difference between the richest and poorest regions ranged, in 2014, from 30% of the EU to 8 average to 539%, or from 8,200 euros to 148,000 euros. Structural funds and cohesion funds are supporting the development of underdeveloped regions of the EU. Such regions are primarily located in the states of Central and Southern Europe. Several funds provide emergency aid support for candidate members to transform their country to conform to the EU standard, 
and support to the Commonwealth of Independent States. TASIS has now become part of the worldwide Europe Aid Programme. EU Research and Technological Framework Programmes sponsor research conducted by consortia from all EU members to work towards a single European research area. Two of the original core objectives of the European Economic Community were the development of a common market, subsequently becoming a single market, and a customs union between its member states. The single market involves the free circulation of goods, capital, people, and services within the EU, and the customs union involves the application of a common external tariff on all goods entering the market. Once goods have been admitted into the market they cannot be subjected to customs duties, discriminatory taxes, or import quotas, as they travel internally. The non-EU member states of Iceland, Norway, Liechtenstein, and Switzerland participate in the single market but not in the customs union. Half the trade in the EU is covered by legislation harmonized by the EU. Free movement of capital is intended to permit movement of investments such as property purchases and buying of shares between countries. Until the drive towards economic and monetary union the development of the capital provisions had been slow. Post Maastricht there has been a rapidly developing corpus of ECJ judgments regarding this initially neglected freedom. The free movement of capital is unique insofar as it is granted equally to non-member states. The free movement of persons means that EU citizens can move freely between member states to live, work, study or retire in another country. This required the lowering of administrative formalities and recognition of professional qualifications of other states. The free movement of services and of establishment allows self-employed persons to move between member states to provide services on a temporary or permanent basis. While services account for 60-70% of GDP, legislation in the area is not as developed as in other areas. This lacuna has been addressed by the recently passed Directive on Services in the Internal Market which aims to liberalise the cross-border provision of services. According to the treaty the provision of services is a residual freedom that only applies if no other freedom is being exercised. The creation of a European single currency became an official objective of the European Economic Community in 1969. In 1992, having negotiated the structure and procedures of a currency union, the member states signed the Maastricht Treaty and were legally bound to fulfill the agreed-on rules including the convergence criteria if they wanted to join the monetary union. The states wanting to participate had first to join the European exchange rate mechanism. In 1999, the currency union started first as an accounting currency with 11 member states joining. In 2002, the currency was fully put into place, when euro notes and coins were issued and national currencies began to phase out in the eurozone, which by then consisted of 12 member states. The eurozone has since grown to 19 countries. The euro and the monetary policies of those who have adopted it in agreement with the EU, are under the control of the European Central Bank. The ECB is the central bank for the Eurozone, and thus controls monetary policy in that area with an agenda to maintain price stability. It is at the centre of the European system of central banks, which comprehends all EU national central banks and is controlled by its General Council, consisting of the President of the ECB, who is appointed by the European Council, the Vice President of the ECB, and the Governors of the national central banks of all 28 EU member states. The European system of financial supervision is an institutional architecture of the EU's framework of financial supervision composed by three authorities, 
the European Banking Authority, the European Insurance and Occupational Pensions Authority and the European Securities and Markets Authority. To complement this framework, there is also a European Systemic Risk Board under the responsibility of the ECB. The aim of this financial control system is to ensure the economic stability of the EU. To prevent the joining states from getting into financial trouble or crisis after entering the monetary union, they were obliged in the Maastricht Treaty to fulfill important financial obligations and procedures, especially to show budgetary discipline and a high degree of sustainable economic convergence as well as to avoid excessive government deficits and limit the government debt to a sustainable level. In 2006, the EU27 had a gross inland energy consumption of 1,825 million tonnes of oil equivalent. Around 46% of the energy consumed was produced within the member states while 54% was imported. In these statistics, Nuclear energy is treated as primary energy produced in the EU, regardless of the source of the uranium, of which less than 3% is produced in the EU. The EU has had legislative power in the area of energy policy for most of its existence, this has its roots in the original European coal and steel community. The introduction of a mandatory and comprehensive European energy policy was approved at the meeting of the European Council in October 2005, and the first draft policy was published in January 2007. The EU has five key points in its energy policy, increase competition in the internal market, encourage investment and boost interconnections between electricity grids diversify energy resources with better systems to respond to a crisis, establish a new treaty framework for energy cooperation with Russia while improving relations with energy-rich states in Central Asia and North Africa, use existing energy supplies more efficiently while increasing renewable energy commercialization, and finally, increase funding for new energy technologies. In 2007, EU countries as a whole imported 82% of their oil, 57% of their natural gas and 97.48% of their uranium demands. There is a strong dependence on Russian energy that the EU has been attempting to reduce. The EU is working to improve cross-border infrastructure within the EU, for example through the trans-European networks. Projects under 10 include the Channel Tunnel, LGVEST, the Frigis Rail Tunnel, the Orsund Bridge, the Brenner Base Tunnel and the Strait of Messina Bridge. In 2010 the estimated network covers 75,200 km of roads, 78,000 km of railways, 330 airports, 270 maritime harbors, and 210 internal harbors. Rail transport in Europe is being synchronized with the European Rail Traffic Management System, an initiative to greatly enhance safety, increase efficiency of trains and enhance cross-border interoperability of rail transport in Europe by replacing signaling equipment with digitized mostly wireless versions and by creating a single Europe-wide standard for train control and command systems. The developing European transport policies will increase the pressure on the environment in many regions by the increased transport network. In the pre-2004 EU members, the major problem in transport deals with congestion and pollution. After the recent enlargement, the new states that joined since 2004 added the problem of solving accessibility to the transport agenda. The Polish road network was upgraded such as the A4 Autostrada. The Galileo Positioning System is another EU infrastructure project. Galileo is a proposed satellite navigation system, 
to be built by the EU and launched by the European Space Agency. The Galileo project was launched partly to reduce the EU's dependency on the US-operated global positioning system, but also to give more complete global coverage and allow for greater accuracy, given the aged nature of the GPS system. The Common Agricultural Policy is one of the long-lasting policies of the European Community. The policy has the objectives of increasing agricultural production, providing certainty in food supplies, ensuring a high quality of life for farmers, stabilizing markets and ensuring reasonable prices for consumers. It was, until recently, operated by a system of subsidies and market intervention. Until the 1990s, the policy accounted for over 60% of the then European Community's annual budget, and as of 2013 accounts for around 34%. The policy's price controls and market interventions led to considerable overproduction. These were intervention stores of products bought up by the community to maintain minimum price levels. To dispose of surplus stores, they were often sold on the world market at prices considerably below community guaranteed prices, or farmers were offered subsidies to export their products outside the community. This system has been criticized for undercutting farmers outside Europe especially those in the developing world. Supporters of CAP argue that the economic support which it gives to farmers provides them with a reasonable standard of living. Since the beginning of the 1990s, the CAP has been subject to a series of reforms. Initially, these reforms included the introduction of set aside in 1988, where a proportion of farmland was deliberately withdrawn from production, milk quotas and, more recently, the decoupling of the money farmers receive from the EU and the amount they produce. Agriculture expenditure will move away from subsidy payments linked to specific produce, toward direct payments based on farm size. This is intended to allow the market to dictate production levels. One of these reforms entailed the modification of the EU's sugar regime, which previously divided the sugar market between member states and certain African-Caribbean nations with a privileged relationship with the EU. The EU operates a competition policy intended to ensure undistorted competition within the single market. The Commission as the competition regulator for the single market is responsible for antitrust issues, approving mergers, breaking up cartels, working for economic liberalization and preventing state aid. The Competition Commissioner, currently Margrethe Vestager, is one of the most powerful positions in the Commission, notable for the ability to affect the commercial interests of transnational corporations. For example, in 2001 the Commission for the first time prevented a merger between two companies based in the United States which had already been approved by their national authority. Another high-profile case against Microsoft, resulted in the Commission fining Microsoft over 777 million euros following nine years of legal action. Cultural cooperation between member states has been a concern of the EU since its inclusion as a community competency in the Maastricht Treaty. Actions taken in the cultural area by the EU include the Culture 2007 Year Program, the European Cultural Month event, and orchestras such as the European Union Youth Orchestra. The European Capital of Culture program selects one or more cities in every year to assist the cultural development of that city. 53 EU cities have been part of this initiative up to 2016. Association football is by far the most popular sport in almost all European countries. The other sports with the most participants in clubs are basketball, tennis, swimming, athletics, golf, 
gymnastics, equestrian sports, handball, volleyball and sailing. Sport is mainly the responsibility of the member states or other international organizations, rather than of the EU. However, there are some EU policies that have affected sport, such as the free movement of workers, which was at the core of the Bosman ruling that prohibited national football leagues from imposing quotas on foreign players with European citizenship. The Treaty of Lisbon requires any application of economic rules to take into account the specific nature of sport and its structures based on voluntary activity. This followed lobbying by governing organizations such as the International Olympic Committee and FIFA, due to objections over the application of free market principles to sport, which led to an increasing gap between rich and poor clubs. The EU does fund a program for Israeli, Jordanian, Irish, and British football coaches, as part of the Football for Peace project. The flag of the Union consists of a circle of 12 golden stars on a blue background. The blue represents the West, while the number and position of the stars represent completeness and unity, respectively. Originally designed in 1955 for the Council of Europe, the flag was adopted by the European Communities, the predecessors of the present Union, in 1986. United in Diversity was adopted as the motto of the Union in the year 2000, having been selected from proposals submitted by school pupils. Since 1985, the Flag Day of the Union has been Europe Day, on May 9. The Anthem of the Union is an instrumental version of the Prelude to the Ode to Joy, the fourth movement of Ludwig van Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. The anthem was adopted by European community leaders in 1985 and has since been played on official occasions. Besides naming the continent, the Greek mythological figure of Europa has frequently been employed as a personification of Europe. Known from the myth in which Zeus seduces her in the guise of a white bull, Europa has also been referred to in relation to the present Union. Statues of Europa and the bull decorate several of the Union's institutions and a portrait of her is seen on the 2013 series of Euro banknotes. The bull is for its part, depicted on all residence permit cards. Charles the Great, also known as Charlemagne and later recognized as Pater Europi, has a symbolic relevance to Europe. The Commission has named one of its central buildings in Brussels after Charlemagne and the city of Aachen has since 1949 awarded the Charlemagne Prize to Champions of European Unification. Since 2008, the organizers of this prize, in conjunction with the European Parliament, have awarded the Charlemagne Youth Prize in recognition of similar efforts by young people. Benedict of Nursia is a patron saint of Europe, venerated in the Eastern Orthodox Churches, the Catholic Church, the Oriental Orthodox Churches, the Anglican Communion and Old Catholic Churches. Pope Benedict XVI said that he exercised a fundamental influence on the development of European civilization and culture and helped Europe to emerge from the dark night of history that followed the fall of the Roman Empire. The influence of Saint Benedict produced a true spiritual ferment in Europe, his followers spreading his rule across the continent to establish a new cultural unity based on Christian faith. In 1997, Polish-born Pope John Paul II canonized Poland's 14th-century monarch Jadwiga as Saint Hedwig, the patron saint of Queens and of European unification There are five other recognized patron saints of Europe, declared so by Pope John Paul II between 1989-1999, Cyril and Methodius, Saint Bridget of Sweden, Catherine of Siena and St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross.
Media freedom is a fundamental right that applies to all member states of the European Union and its citizens, as defined in the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights as well as the European Convention on Human Rights, one within the EU enlargement process, guaranteeing media freedom is named a key indicator of a country's readiness to become part of the EU. The vast majority of media in the European Union are national-oriented. However, some Europe-wide media focusing on European affairs have emerged since the early 1990s, such as Euronews, EU Observer, Euroctif, or Politico Europe. Arte is a public Franco-German TV network that promotes programming in the areas of culture and the arts. 80% of its programming are provided in equal proportion by the two member companies, while the remainder is being provided by the European Economic Interest Grouping Arte GEIE and the channel's European partners. The media programme of the European Union intends to support the European popular film and audiovisual industries since 1991. It provides support for the development, promotion and distribution of European works within Europe and beyond. Official Overviews and Data News and Interviews Educational Resources